Hello, folks, and welcome to Paranormal Nation Radio. Not so normal, your regular show on Tuesday nights. How's Denise? Doing pretty good. I have I have a helper tonight, besides Ron. Yeah. So uh, just be aware, I might be running in and out, but I already took care of the worst part. You know, hey, I don't have to deal with shit every day, so I already hey. dealt with that. So, so the other one, uh, little Miss Clover, she asleep? No, she did not wake up until almost two o'clock today. Wow. So, from this morning? Yeah, from this morning. Oh, yeah. So she she's wanted to sleep it. and she's teething and uh, she <laughs> wouldn't eat for anybody. So I went over there and she ate for me and cuddled and then I left and she got all pissed. <laughs> <laughs> You that was well, we know that hap- it oh, happened. Oh, yeah, we know. So, but it is what it is. And, you know, we are get got them all prepared to go to the family reunion this weekend and see great grandma. And so we're all excited about that. And uh, it'll be a, probably be a really fun weekend. Well, so, that's good. And that's then I went to the cardiologist today. I got a stress text test next wednesday how many who knows how many stress tests i'll go through between now and wednesday but i'm supposed (coughs) to have one on wednesday so we'll see how that goes so so tonight guys i do have a guest i don't know if he's gonna make it his daughter got um he had a family emergency we'll just stick with family emergency and uh we're gonna keep him in our prayers and hopefully the emergency is not an emergency just an urgency Right. And, uh, everything will be fine. But I invited Chris Houston to come on with us tonight yes. to go over some of these videos. And he's not here. So you're stuck with us. That's right. And so, we'll go over bits and parts. If people want to watch the whole video, you can go to the Bill of Rights Network or Things Network and uh, watch the entire video of the Cox cemetery for the paranormal giving tree so it was it was an interesting night to say the least so and hello everybody in chat we see you there i hope you guys are ready for to ask some questions or if you see something that we miss make sure you comment in there but uh you guys still doing videos Mm-hmm. We'll bring this up. This is before you guys came on live. <clears throat> Walking down to that west edge. Because when you guys came on live, it was dark. And we, about, ended, yeah. up, and we ended up down oh, through yeah. there. So, we'll walk down through here a little bit. And uh, I'll stop it down there at the end where we can show you stuff before we get to the other part giving tree so some other people are supposed to be joining us joining us denise and ron supposed to be jumping on here in a little while to do their virtual investigation with it so you see what it looks like i don't need flashlight on you can see but uh yeah we got and i'm still getting pretty good signal in there that's amazing Because we are out in the middle of nowhere, folks. But uh, later on tonight, it gets a little darker. We'll be in here using Echobox, Necrophonics, and some of the people comes on here. We'll be investigating through the camera on this lens. As I walk down through here, it's beautiful out here. But I'm also watching for rattlesnakes. This is rattlesnake country up here. But we're going to be live as much as I can. I've got my phone charged in on the tripod to uh, keep it charged up. So hopefully it don't overheat while we're going live. But uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll see if that one is still down here where, okay. This is what we tell you about that. Now, right there, 
-hmm. is where after you guys gone on, this is where you let us later on that night. Yep. Now, do you see anything during the daylight there, Denise? I do see something in the back of the video. I can't point. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing um, a man looking towards, towards there. He looks like a... Um, He's a Native American, and he's standing back in the trees between, okay, so center left. So go, okay. to, go to this with your pointer. Okay. Go uh, to the center. Maybe we can see it. There you go. Okay, over to your right a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. See that little dark spot in there? Okay, that's a tree. But next to that tree, right in that little dark spot there is where I'm seeing it. Okay, right in there. Yeah, I'm seeing his face. And he's very dark-skinned Native American. Okay. He may just be watching you. But that's about, that's all I see right now. Right. Pulling a hatchet out of him. No, he's not. Pull, he's not trying to scalp anybody. No. <laughs> well, we have Mr. Ron providing commentary in the back. Oh, that's fine. That's great. Ron's <laughs> been out there. You guys have been out there two or three times, and I tell you what. And the path through there now, where Gary's got it mowed and trampled down, it's a beautiful path. It's almost like walking down a trail. Yeah, looks like a trail. Yeah, definitely looks like a trail. <laughs> Yeah, but as we said later on that night, when the portal comes into play right there, see, that's that opening at the end there goes to the right, goes to another field that we've never been in and stuff, and then to the left goes into part of the cemetery and down there where uh, Matt seen the battalion of soldiers. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. But we'll go on down through here and see, and then I'll skip up to some other places there. Gravel Road up there. Right there is a big dirt mound. Right? But see that rock right there? See how it's flat on one end? There's a flat rock up in the weeds there. Later on this fall, we're going to be digging that mound out and see if something's on the other side of that rock as a headstone. It looks like it was flat to set on something as a marker. So, hard to tell. But we're coming out on the south end of this cemetery. Out in here, it's beautiful. Probably see some gear before the night's over with. So join along with us on this investigation for the Paranormal Giving Tree through Things Network. You check them out on Facebook. But uh, we have Dowsing Rod show us a lot out in here. We got a lot of flat rock like that. That could have been the uh, base of a headstone. Another one right here. And different things. But, uh, yeah. So, join us. I'll get up there and get set up and get the echo box going. And uh, see what we can hear. Beautiful and peaceful out here. Can you hear me all right? This is a good time to show the folks listening. See this gravel road right here. In 1959, that gravel road was not there. 
it stopped. This was the cemetery. The motor grader guy got tired of making all the turns down there. He went right through the cemetery and made a road. This was a perfect time to show everybody, you know, they hear us talk about it and stuff. But there are more than likely graves underneath that gravel road right there. Hopefully the sound's going through. Yes. Yep. Grandpa. We'll go up here by the truck and I'll show you the two. Okay, here we go, folks. Hopefully you can hear this. Let me know. Hello. Hi, Crystal. Are there any spirits that want to talk to us tonight? Maybe. Yeah, you can talk. Who am I talking to? Remember, folks, type in what you hear. Respect. I give you respect out here. No. Uh, Do you have anything to say to the people that are watching us live right now? Is the unknown Indian here? Can you, can you listeners hear the echo box? Now we have a Razor vehicle going. Yeah, that Razor was the only vehicle that drove by there that night. You know, that's unusual. Anytime we don't hardly. Yeah, that anything. is an unusual uh, sighting. Yeah, I saw it in the background. I was watching it. Yeah. I, I like, mean. Oh, wow. <laughs> what yeah, he ask? drove by. He didn't wave. He didn't do nothing. He just really kept on going by. Huh. Right, going, what are these weird people doing out here? Exactly. And what yeah. news hanging out in the cemetery With tonight? all this stuff. Well, we did that one night with the cameras and everything. Right. I mean, Gary's walking around, and uh, I heard a truck, and I told him, I said, oh, we're filming a gigantic buck on the other side of the gravel road there. I said, be our luck, the game warden show up. Who was yeah. it? The game warden. Well, you're was, only filming. You, I mean, you are shooting a buck, but with a camera, not a gun. Exactly. And he happened to be the regional manager for here he was out of savannah oh down oh. there because they was waiting to get another one into our area but there had been some poaching down around this cemetery yeah he goes well don't be alarmed because there's going to be another agent show up here in a second and i was like okay we're just filming a deer you know yeah. <laughs> well you want him to be prepared i i tell you 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 said you know like I said, play on words, you know, shooting a deer, 
shooting a deer. I mean, it could be either, you know, boom, boom, or the other. At Sprint right. one time, we got a requisition in. Somebody asked to, they wanted the funding to shoot four kids on a playground. Mm -hmm. And and it was for a commercial, of course. It was not boom, boom. It was film. But I told them, I said, you know, this got a lot of talk that you're shooting four kids on a playground. <laughs> Luckily, it was me that had to read it. And I took it for, I didn't take it word for word. I took it for what I knew it was. Right. But, you know, so people can take take those words and go. But it it's still to this day is funny when you look at how the way people write stuff and say stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's something else. But no, I was underneath the cedar tree there because this is when it started to rain. Right. And everything. So I'll skip forward a little bit and uh, see what else. No. Mm -hmm. This is when you guys first jumped on. There's there's a good picture to show everybody when we talk about they cut the gravel road right through right. the cemetery. Yeah. Folks, you see the cemetery on the left. The right is part of the cemetery, too. And they cut that road right down to the middle of it. And there are dirt mounds pushed up where they graded and pushed it up out of the way. And... We have found parts of headstones in there. So that goes to tell you there were graves out here. Do they know who the road grader guy was that did all this? Yeah, we do. And does his family not speak about it or? No, he's long dead and gone and oh, different yeah. township members and everything. But they did it illegally. Because to make a new gravel road, you had to file all right. the things and do everything. The anyway. They didn't. They just right, told him, was, to do what you want to. Right. They didn't survey it like they were supposed to. No. They're just right now redoing our road out. They're redoing Metcalf. You know, and anybody who lives in the Kansas City area knows that Metcalf is a main road. Well, exactly. even down here where we live at, you know, 200th and some, you know, almost 300 something in Metcalf. They're yeah. redoing the road. It took a month to get to this point to where they could do it because they had to file all the stamp paperwork just to put in sewers and all this other crap. So right. you can't just throw in a road where you want to. Even, I mean, now you can drive on your grass and crap and make a road yourself, but not. it's not going to be a county road. It's not going to be a city road. It's just going to be a driveway. And then you still got to get that driveway filed with the county at some point. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. So let me get on to any other spots in here. Here we're running the ink box, so we'll see what it brings up. Mm -hmm. oh, uh -huh. Wait. I heard it say, I've got a message. Ghost. Can you talk through this? Mm -hmm. You can adjust the scan on it. Who's here? Tell us your name. Okay, Rain, you can hold off for a little bit. Uh, 
I am who is I am who's here the child's voice okay hopefully y'all can hear that good I guess it's sad people. Yeah, it's just bad people. Yeah. Who's sad? Can you spirit show yourself tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Who's talking? All right. And then I'm a little younger. And now we're getting out into the area where the dowsing rods say a lot of the soldiers and Mormons are buried. Why wouldn't the Mormon graves be marked? Uh if they were shot and killed, uh, Christians out here wouldn't have uh, marked their grave. Do you? Did you guys take the dowsing rods and check if any of their names are related to the Hans Mill massacre? Yeah, we have, and there's a couple of them that do. Hmm. This is on the southeast corner, almost to the gravel road, folks. It's beautiful. Now what? My youngest and my oldest daughter was younger were about the same age project together with wolves. Okay? You're and hearing a drum sound? And Bridget, Drum sounds, huh? Bridget, your uh, April's kids are 6, 7, 9, 11, 13, 14, 16. She probably sees it. No, she can't see it. Oh, she can't see no, it? Because she's on Facebook and April's on YouTube. Oh, right. That's right. So. Boy, that's a mess. But Anthony said he heard drum sound. Hmm. I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you would either hear them from the cavalry, possibly during the Civil War years. Right. Possibly from the Native American uh, battles that may have happened up there. Like I said, we don't have any proof of any, any battles happening right there. All we know is that it's more than likely a pass-through area. Right. I feel like there's a portal back in the woods near the, so when you were walking through the woods across the street where the mountains yeah. are, I feel like there's a portal right before you get, so you go in the, you get, go in the woods and you make your left and you're walking through there. And just before you get to the, the field, I feel like there's a portal there. Down there by the mound where we started finding big headstones out of that pasture. Okay, so where Gary's truck is parked. Right. Okay, you go across the street. Yeah. Into, into the woods. Yeah. And you make a left. Yeah. Down the and path. You're walking down that path. Okay. So you're going towards where the field is where the cavalry we, where we see that right that's right before you get to that edge of the woods is where i feel like the portal is okay there's hmm. a big mound there i showed them earlier right where there is a rock that is flat on one side and curved up it looks like it was set on top 
of like a gray. Okay. It's in a mound that I don't think he pushed that dirt up because that's way off down in the bank. Right. But that pasture over there, since he cut the road in uh, 60, 59, 60, farmers have done a lot over there. So if there was rocks piled up to make a headstone, they probably picked them up and put them in a pile. Like I said, I just feel like there's a portal there for stuff to come. And I and I believe the portal was created by the indigenous people. Really? Yeah. Well, we're going to take a walk down through there. Okay? Okay. I, you got me curious about that now. I've never heard of a portal out here. Me? Yes. It's just something that, that I felt went just just feel it really hey, and of Carl, course the bugs are getting crazy around the light yeah they're really picking up can you and pause it says she feels it too okay well we're going down yeah. we, have a, we have a question in the chat i don't want to go too far before we okay i want lawrence to think we're ignoring him oh, okay since lawrence we're Go ahead, Denise. So, Lawrence, you're asking where we're from. It depends on which from he you're says, asking. Where are you guys? So, that, so we are. Do you mean on the we're at on the video or, or where we're at? Yeah. So currently, Carl is in northern Missouri, north east or northwest Missouri, and we are in east central Kansas. So. That's where we are now. But when we were doing the video that you're seeing, that was, you go ahead, Carl, tell them where it's at. Okay. <clears throat> Denise and Ron were exactly where they're sitting now that night. And I was down about 13, almost 18 miles south of where I'm at right now at the Cox Cemetery here in northwest and eh, kind of northwest missouri so so like i said i didn't want lawrence to think that we were ignoring him and in our chat i don't want to respond to all seven places that we're going live with an answer that's not necessary for all seven places <laughs> exactly but so, this is the cox cemetery in caldwell county and hello luke yeah, we yeah, there's there's Luke. Luke. see he didn't get killed Friday. That's a good what part. What part of Illinois are you in, Lawrence? Because we was just at Ashmore, what, a little over a month ago. Yeah, and Ron and I are volunteers at the McPike Mansion in Alton, Illinois. So and if you know where 36 Highway is that goes through illinois into missouri you come across and you come to hamilton missouri that's approximately where the cemetery is just south peoria okay peoria. okay i've been there yeah. you just come straight come through hannibal and come on across 36 highway and uh yep. you'll come to hamilton missouri and then this cemetery is south of there about five miles thank you raymond you have an outstanding night too. Yeah, this was done July 30th on the Paranormal Giving Tree over on Things Network. So we're it it this part here is interesting and stuff because I've never heard Denise talk about portals that much, other than ones that were already in a location. That we already knew well that we already knew about in a location. Yeah. We never let's go with we never discovered our own portal in the past. The haunted highway. Is it? Well highway thirty six? No, he that's that Lawrence. Talking? Raymond, where's the no. haunted highway? Tell yeah. us about you know, give us a little bit more information. <laughs> Carl's like, I, never heard that. I don't know where that one's at. I but can hear a lot of highways well, that are haunted, but yeah. But have you ever seen a ghost car? 
Yeah, I have. See, I have too. <laughs> I seen a lot of them driving over the road. Did you really? We at two, three o'clock in the morning. You're traveling down. You're right. dead tired. You're traveling down the interstate. Not very many vehicles out, and you look in your mirror, and there's lights coming up behind you, and you look up the road again, and you look back, and there's nothing there. And there's, there's no, no turn off. There's no nothing. Right. How about at three thirty, four o'clock in the afternoon during rush hour traffic? That <laughs> I can't say for sure, and but I have a witness. Wide awake. Yes, wide awake, wake driving, and Lauren saw it with me. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, oh, so yeah. so that's right here on. Uh, yeah, and that one had US been called 69. in to the. She called the police department, and uh, the police department, they've had calls about the same car, well, doing the same thing by other right. people. I just can't remember when. Hey, April. It was Michael. So please tell us about this haunted highway, Raymond. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of. Ron's got a. Have you told them your story about your uh, no your windy road? Well, I don't know if I, I did on this. Someday, Ron will have to tell you guys that story. Well, we'll get Ron and we're going to get Pastor Gary on here and talk about people standing on the side of the highway. Gary's got a fantastic story that happened to him. Well, um, I don't know what mine was. I wouldn't classify it as a person or people. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and of course we saw that one guy. Probably on the more. Way to Polo. Yeah, you did. So the what? The guy on the way to Polo. Oh the yeah. Cemetery. Yeah. So. But, yeah, that was different for you, even. Yeah. So, like I said, I didn't want you know Lawrence to think we we're ignoring him. So we can go. We're going to go back to the video, guys. So we're right. going to be muted, so you don't hear us yapping in the background. And you don't hear feedback on it on my end. Yeah, so. uh, I was hearing yeah, feedback on, too. On yeah. the re on the uh, replay, I've got about an hour and a half into it, but I've got I've got stuff that I was writing down times that are more there. I got at least six of them. Okay, and I'm getting we'll ready go. to come up. It's about an hour and thirty six minutes where I saw those four lights flash. Okay, behind we'll you go guys. through this short segment right here to where we find the portal. Then okay, yeah. we'll come back on and then give me your time frames and we'll go up to there and see what we got. Okay. Well, I, I wrote them down a, a, about that, but when I rewatch it, I'm going to get the exact times and what I exactly saw or, or heard. Well, it oh, may okay. Be, it may be another, it may be another, another show. For right. That. So, and, Texas is Mexico territory. I don't think so. Yeah. I, it was at one time, but it ain't no more. Ain't no more. You lost. Okay. Goodbye, troll. See yeah. Troll. Hey, oh, we man. got Rick hey, jumping in. What in the hell is he what? doing here? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to find out. Uh, we'll bring him up real quick. Hey, Rick. Hey. I heard that. <laughs> I know you did. I know you're not deaf. <laughs> oh, we're just going over some of the stuff from the investigation at the cemetery. Oh, fantastic. This is, we're at the point right now where it came to Denise. There was a portal out there. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Rex oh. like, oh, sweet. So, so when... <laughs> So Rex, to give you a little background, when we get this the video started, we have to all mute ourselves because there's feedback. Okay. So, okay. Okay. I'm I'm start it. Okay. Let's see where I'm at. See, this bad is what when you make me go out there and I'm freezing my ass off. I don't want to go walk around and tell you anything. Yeah, that's all right. And plus, that time when we went, we didn't know about all this stuff over there. Hey, one thing about it, if you hear me yell and scream and go big, but you heard it live. <laughs> you better not get blurry video. I'll have to hurt you. Hey, yeah. I, if I do, I'm going to make sure I turn this thing around real quick as he eats me. So, huh. The question is, is, is Bigfoot good or bad? I don't know. 
in Mississippi and Alaska, they're chasing them with guns and everywhere else they're trying to give them right. apples and marbles. Like, make up your mind. My luck, I'll walk out here and startle with deer. Okay. Here is the path. Okay. You're talking about. Yep. Yep. Okay, you see that dirt mound right in front of me? Yep. Okay. We're going to go up through this way. There's two paths in here. See that rock? Yeah. It's flat on one side. Like it was standing on something. Watch out now for the poison ivy. Oh, I know. And say I see it everywhere. I know, and I'm deathly allergic to it, and I ain't got it out here yet, knock on wood. But now you say the portal is in here. Yeah, right before you get to the field. Right there's the field. So then it's right there. It's well, right here's that mound. Just past your rock, Anthony says. Yeah, just right there. Right here? Back. Right before that tree. Right in there. Over to your left a little. Right there. Right, right there? there? Stop. Stop. Yes. There. That's the path. Right there. Yes. It's right on the path. Oh, on the path. Oh, the portal is right here. It's right there. Mark it. Step through it. Well, I'm going to mark it real quick. I guess, yeah, I guess walk through it. See if you get. Dude, we got too many. See this rock? See how somebody is kind of shaped it? That bigger rock is completely flat on one side. Now, you're saying right here, right? Yes. April says to set up a trail cam there. That's what I'm going to tell Gary. We're going to yeah. set one up right here. Good idea. And have it facing the direction that your camera is facing now. Okay, towards the field. Yeah. 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 That's a good shot right there. Because where this is at, Denise, like you know, that west timber goes down to the edge. Yep. And then there's a big field there that's part of the cemetery. And then there's a draw that goes up into another field. Right. Right. That's where we're at in that draw. So, because when we walked through there, so the second time we went out there, we walked through there. Uh huh. I remember feeling something, but I didn't know what I was feeling at the time. Anthony says, yes, so you can watch spirits go in and out. Okay. If, that, uh, put, okay. Put the trail cam up. Okay, this is something I was going to mention to you. You can unmic yourself, guys. Dave just put something up there that I said on several of the shows. All right. Your camera just zoomed in, in and back out. That don't happen on StreamYard. That's exactly right. It did it several times in this location that night. Yeah. But could but your, your camera can't do that? Your cell phone no. can do that, right? Your cell phone can. No. Not on the cell phone. You can't zoom in. Like if I'm using the camera on there. And you have that, was like that your that. cell phone? So you have to do it manually to zoom in is what you're saying. No, you once you go on the StreamYard, that camera is fixed. Oh, okay. That's why it pixelates so much trying to get it. What were, you, were you using your uh, camera or were you using your cell phone? phone? Cell phone. Okay, that's what I thought. All this was filmed with the cell phone. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, and this right here, huh. this that's, still that's gets weird. me. Denise wasn't the only one leading us to this area. Right. We had what two or three other people in the chat room that were doing it. 
that was giving you validation. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I told Luke last night I wanted him to find that out. How come this thing zoomed in and out? Yeah, it did. I, I I I saw that. As soon as you put that stone down there. We well, were... it really does it later on in this Okay, video. now watch. Now, when you get your dousing rods out, if I remember right, I, I like I said, I haven't gotten that far watching the replay. Yeah. I, it did it a lot. And when it I didn't zoomed in and out, it. when it zoomed mm -hmm. in and out, up top there where you can see the, the branch that comes across in the middle, yeah. the, ring, the end of it here had moved. Right. And that's, and that's when the camera doing. zoomed in and out. Yeah. It shouldn't well, you'll, zoom you'll in You'll notice and out. later on, Rex, that you'll see like branches over here moving a lot. I mean a lot. And then the other ones are just dead still. Yeah, because everything was still, were, but the yeah. end right there was had moved well, like some well, back, hey, like Carl, I would walk up. and hit it with my head and brush it. Yeah. But I didn't see anything else move around it. No, it it gets a little the wind picks up in there in a little while, but like you said, some of the leaves will move, some of them don't, and then all of them will move. Back back it up to uh just before that, before you put down the, and the camera goes in and out. Okay. We watch it again. I want to watch the uh the branch there. This way, there's two pads in here. <coughs> See that rock? Yeah. It's flat on one side, like it was standing on something. Watch out now for the poison ivy. Oh, I know. And say I see it everywhere. I know, and I'm deathly allergic to it, and I ain't got it out here yet, knock on wood. But now you say the portal is in here. Yeah, right before you get to the field. Right there's the field. So then it's right there. It's well, right here's that mound. Just past your rock, Anthony says. Yeah, just right there. Right here. Back. Right before that tree. Right in there. Over to your left a little. Right there. Right, right there? there? Stop. Stop. Yes. There. That's the path. Right there. Yes. It's right on the path. Oh, on the path. Oh, the portal is right here. It's right there. Mark it. Step through it. Well, I'm going to mark it real quick. I guess, yeah, I guess walk through it. See if you get. We got too many. See this rock? See how somebody is kind of shaped it? That bigger rock is completely flat on one side. Now you're saying right here, right? Yes. April says to set up a trail cam there. That's what I'm going to tell Gary. We're going to yeah. set one up right here. So you've seen a couple of times where the camera had to refocus and it looked like it zoomed in. But right. that last time when I bent over to lay the rock down, did you notice the camera zoomed in and came back? He's trying to focus on your ass. No. <laughs> That's true, but no, it zoomed in. Now, focus is I saw it. where it pixelates. Yeah, I was seeing that during the, during the, while we were doing all this and Part of what I was seeing was where the the portal is trying to open up, and you'll see it up here in a little bit. Okay. See what? How the portal is trying to open up is kind of pulsating a little bit, and you can see it. You can? I think you guys can. Yeah. Tell me if yep. you do. Where? When did you? You have an explanation. Okay, Luke. 
Luke has an explanation for it. Well, if it's not paranormal, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll continue on a little kidding. bit with this video here. Good idea. And have it facing the direction that your camera is facing now. Okay, towards the field. Yeah. 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 That's a good shot right there. Because where this is at, Denise, like you know, that west timber goes down to the edge. Yep. And then there's a big field there that's part of the cemetery. And then there's a draw that goes up into another field. Right. Right. That's where we're at in that draw. So, because when we walk through there, so the second time we went out there, we walked through there. Uh huh. I remember feeling something, but I didn't know what I was feeling at the time. Anthony says yes, so you can watch spirits go in and out. Okay. If, that, uh, put, okay. Put the trail cam up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anthony, you guys talk to him. I'm what? gonna go get Gary, and I'm gonna go get a trail cam. All right. I'm gonna ask okay. ask Anthony a question now. When he sets a trail cam up, you're saying you can watch spirits go in and out. What exactly would I be looking for? I mean, you, you see more than I do, but what would I see? Like orbs? You would, I don't know what you'd see, to be honest. I don't know if you'd see anything. Or would I see anything? I, I think know. you might see, like, it would suddenly get. I would say, what's blurry. what would a normal person see? You might, <laughs> this, like I said, you might see something. It might get blurry all of a sudden in a certain spot like it just did. Like you're trying to refocus your eyes. Oh, different colored. Yeah, that's what I would think. So, but again, it's just Do like. you feel anything? It's like how people. I think she's talking to you. It's like when people see spirits, we don't all see them exactly the same. Do you feel anything there? Or are you picking up stuff? Yeah, I feel, like I said, I feel like there's something that. The wind's kicking up. Um trying to come through there right now and is it up. from the ground that's just coming up i mean the uh portal it's okay so or is it like between the trees going in and out it's between the trees so Not you got this tree here this tree here yeah okay and, flowing through and it's about well, probably about six feet it's like like a doorway then yeah, right like here between the trees it's like a circle okay like a doorway all right to me i see it like a like a like a circle well thank you guys you're giving me validation that i know something i'm not just pulling the stuff out of my ass so oh that was a big bug Maybe it's a portal. I want to look like a bird. Okay, okay that was a piece of grass was moving. The camera keeps trying to readjust itself. Where'd Gary go? <laughs> Run they're, off in the woods no, on the no, other they're, side. They're still over by the, the gravestone. I know. Carl's probably smoking a cigarette while he runs over there. Do portals. Let them travel. Yes, April. Back. Um, it not only does it let spirits travel faster, it may also allow things like Bigfoot interdimensional beings be able to travel faster as well. So at least that's the whole yeah, thought yeah, behind too much travel channel. Too much travel channel. Hey, there's portals there too. When you mentioned a circle, I got an immediate mental image of a circle with swirling colors, but I don't visually see it with my eyes. That's not uncommon. 
but watch and you'll see that it's going to go suddenly blurry and then it'll be clear. And at that point in time, something's coming through. <coughs> okay. You want to go home, huh? I hear. Oh, I hear. If I think it's his stuff I'm hearing. I thought I was <coughs> hearing <coughs> Carl come back through the woods. Okay, we're back. I was. <laughs> yeah, you heard us. You see distortion? Yeah, we were talking about that. That's, I don't see. They, what they're seeing is the lights from you guys making it distorted right now. Yeah, right now. But before that, we were starting to see some distortion. What about? Um, I was explaining how you can see what's coming, see it's something coming through the portal. Let me see. Right there. Is that rock over there? No, that rock was right up there. Okay. I said it there. There. There, there, there you go. Yeah, right up in that area. Because I was telling them, they asked me how big it was. I said about six feet tall. Now, yep. explain to me what you're seeing at the portal. Are you seeing a round circle? Yeah. Like you would on that TV show, The Galaxy, or whatever it was. I don't know, kind of like just a round door. Okay. You're talking a round yeah. door. Yeah. Without a handle, no handle on the door, just this kind of like um a fire ring. Kind of. Um it's not it's just kind of like in the middle it gets really blurry. Uh-huh coming through yeah, so just so, got blurry yeah you'll see it it'll it's it'll change when something's trying to come through so why is that is there, is there oh, yeah kind of like saloon doors kind of oh, like that oh you got it on video i said oh, Anthony's on seeing it as a as a door door i'm seeing it as a round yeah stargate is what i was thinking of okay i guess so I don't know. Stargate. Science fiction movie. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say what's so that? I like I said that's I, I kind of that's how I kind of see it like, like he said a Native American woven door you know like at a teepee it's, yeah like it's round, round usually okay the best way I can think of describing it what you're yeah. saying you know that ring light you got oh yeah imagine that thing huge kind of. Okay. Yes. Oh. So this is interesting because we I, never knew this. I can't see anything. I right do. <laughs> but it Start makes sense. Three. Why wouldn't there be a portal? Because that's <laughs> got to be off of a headstone or a marker of somebody's grave. That rock there. 
Yeah. It's perfectly flat on one side where somebody's chiseled it. I'm going to go. I'm going to leave Ron here with you guys. Okay. You got a flashlight? Okay. I'm having Gary go up and get the dowsing rod. We're going to try that down here. I need another portal. Can you point to the exact opening of the portal? No, you can still use two. Can you point to the portal? As I move, tell me when I'm in the portal. Come on back, yeah. Come on back. Right there. Looks like the center. About a foot away from that rock. Get back this way, move that. Point towards the energy. Like, go to your right, and I'll bet you the dousing right. Yeah. Now go to your right, and I bet you that rod goes to your left. It's like a. Uh, it's like it's trying to center. There you go. Yeah. Then come back. You'll be right in the center. Just the center of the portal. Yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's why I had you do that. Thank you. This is how, if, if anyone out there, this is how you see dousing rods work. Did you see how fast those dousing rods crossed? Yep. And I bet you could probably feel it too, couldn't you? Yes, you could. And if you noticed when they went like that, later on when I turn around, I have to ask them. I say, thank you. Can you open them? Yep. Before they would open. Usually you say thank you and they open up. Right. And Luke says, oh, prime fairy kind <laughs> of two little boogers could be playing all sort of tricks. <laughs> it could be lemmings. <laughs> yeah, could be. Could be. I, now, uh, Carl, when I asked you to do that the way you did it, the reason I, I had you do that, because uh -huh. I've seen this before. Now, when I had that incident at, at Sally House, when I had that group down there and I saw the orbs getting bigger and brighter and then get sucked up right in, in that corner. Later on, not that same day, it was like a couple weeks later, I went down the base by myself, went back in the hole, got the dousing rod. I did the same thing you did. I asked, you know, where it was and everything. They crossed and it's they the rods felt like they're welded together. Right. I mean, you literally had to ask them, you know, hey, un undo it because you would pull on it and it wouldn't come apart. Right. But and I would do that, and once I got it centered, it was in that corner, in the uh, the the, the dining room. Mm -hmm. It was right in the corner there, and it was down in the basement. But when I went to the left, I said, you know, center this up. Well, when I go to the left, the rod would go to the right, and when I'd go to the right, it'd go back and center to the left. And I went, wow, that's that's amazing. But that's why I had you do that because I, right. I knew what was going to happen if that's actually, you know, what we call a portal. Right. And that's that's right. what happened. Yeah. And we do the same thing on finding graves. You center up to right. where they cross in the center. But when they cross, you say, thank you. They'll open up on a grave. Yep. This here cross and you had to do more and well, almost pull them apart. Yeah. It's like they're welded together. It's weird. Yeah. There was there was a lot of energy in there. Yep. But you will, you'll was, feel it. You'll feel it in the rods. I mean, it's like a tingle in your right. hands. It's like, yeah. a, like a little small static electricity. Right. It Did was, your, it was pretty warm out that night. Yeah. But standing right there was, was a good cool. 15 degrees difference. Yep. Even at nighttime. So did you feel the hair on the back of your neck or your arms stand up? On my arms, I could feel tingling. Yep. 
How about your legs? People what? usually discount their legs. A lot of times I can feel my legs tingle in right. some places. Well, what gets me is looking at the video. Usually I'm standing straight. <laughs> Notice how my knees are buckled? Yeah. I'm wondering. I'm arched back. Right. Were you maybe were you were feeling like you were being pushed? Pushed, or I could have been feeling like off kilter. I was going down. You know, getting ready to were you uh were you a little bit drained later on? Your energy or no, not that night. Now okay. the next day was uh, one of the biggest paranormal hangovers I'd ever had. Wow. And the thing I mean, is, you I couldn't that long. No, we uh, were there five hours. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not nothing for Carl. No, that's nothing. But I mean, I got home, went to bed. We got to bed about uh one thirty in the morning. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's not too bad. I didn't get up until eight o'clock and I got up, <laughs> drank my usual three, four cups of coffee to try to get awake. And my body had just felt like I ran a 50 mile race. Huh? I know all about that. Yes, Luke, you're going to have to come out there and see this place. Bring your tent. You get over here. Yeah, bring your tent. So, Rex, what do you think about this? The way she led me to a portal. That was, and I noticed that too, that your stance was awkward. Yeah. You know, I, that something had to been right there that was either, you know, pulling you from behind or, but something made you stand that way because that's just that's not normal. No, no, that's no. not normal. The way I, I I've never normal. seen you stand like that. No, it looks like I'm arched back. Yeah, you know, either something's pushing me or the rods are heavy, and I'm trying to. Oh, you're squeezing your butt cheeks real tight for some reason. I am. I guess. I don't know. Well, there's no bathrooms out there, so. <laughs> but yeah, Denise is. She just keeps amazing me every time. Okay, there. Good point, Dave. Look at the shirt. See how my shirt goes down the back and then pulls in. And you have no ass, so that shouldn't do that. Exactly. Huh? Yeah, it does look like something's pulling on you. It does. It almost looks like yeah, Rex. You'll have to sky. come down. We do a camp out. You'll have to come down. A little road trip. Absolutely. Tip, motorcycle road. Well, not on the gravel. Probably not on your motorcycle. It might be a little cold then. <laughs> oh, I'll make my bad. way down there somehow. <laughs> but yeah, we'll go. I'll play a little bit more, and we'll discuss some more of this because it gets really interesting in a little while. Oh yeah. Bring bring the the yeah, Dave, you can bring the wieners. You can come down. Okay, let me kill my mic. Just as long as you don't bring <laughs> assholes or dicks, we're fine. <laughs> <That'll be laughs> well. I'm just saying. We have enough assholes. Like, where the portal is at? Like, well, come oh, wow, they portal. never cross like that. Is that well, come the portal? Snap. Is this the entrance to the portal? Is this the entrance to the portal? Can you uh -huh. see them cross on? Yeah, oh yeah. Can you see mine? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Show show the power of hold the rods out. Have them ask show the the power of the portal and touch those rods, stick those rods together. Can you show the power like, of like the they're welded and hold these rods together? Can you straighten them out? Can you straighten them out? Can you uncross? Can you uncross? Thank you for showing me the portal. Now uncross them. <laughs> oh, that was. Yeah, that was different. <laughs> That's what I thought was going. 
that's one of the deals there when you see how long it took to uncross those rods we've, we've had that happen to where they felt like they're welded shut you, you see you see apart. me you see me trying not to laugh you're right when i ask you to do that right but you knew yeah. what was going to happen i knew what was going to happen I kept asking the same way I asked, you know, right. thank you. Could you open these? You know, thanks for the power, uh, all this and that. Yep. That took five times longer than it normally. Have you ever seen anything like that, Rex, before where dowsing rods basically is a weird... are stuck together and won't come apart? No. See, it, now, it's a strange hurt. feeling, believe me. It is because it... you're used to just you know, thank you, and they open back up and ask your next question. Okay? The only other place at this cemetery it's done that is up there at the grave of the unknown Indian. But up I, there, yeah. we lose power. The rods stick together. We had rods stick together literally up there across like this, and I had to grab Randy's arm to help pull him apart. Yep. Yeah, we had some at the Sally House. Not these, but your your average everyday curtain or clothes, clothes hanger. hanger. Yeah. It was stuck just like this. On the tips. I don't know if I can. Just like that. Like you soldered it together. And it wouldn't come apart. He's pulling my arms. Okay, we all know I'm not that strong. Right. I'm strong as I need to be. Couldn't pull it apart in front of a group of 20 people. Wow. And you know, we're doing a we're doing a tour with a bunch of people showing them how to use the dowsing rods and stuff, and I can't get them apart. And <laughs> eventually they came apart, but it was the strangest looked, thing. She looked over at me and she goes, I, I, I can't get these apart. And I'm like, What do you mean you can't get them apart? <laughs> these just, are the dowsing rods just I move use your at night. They're just clothes hangers with uh yeah, glow in the dark yellow fingernail polish on the end of them. Yep, that's what right. I Yep. Now, usually, I'll see if my camera can do this, is usually they'll cross about like that. Okay. Yeah, so I got they it. cross about like that. Just about in the middle. That night, they crossed like that. Yep. And stayed there until they finally opened back up. Did you notice when you were doing that that you were kind of swaying? You you weren't like it was subtle, but it was in, like in, he was, in the video or now? Yeah, in the video. Okay. Yeah, because I'm standing right in the portal. Yeah, you would sway. It'd be really subtle. Uh huh. It doesn't take. I mean, it doesn't take much to make the rods move. But you have to know exactly how to to move to make them go. You know, like if you're okay, not saying anything about faking, but I have seen people fake it before. I have too. <laughs> I've also well. seen people that you know, like I said, I like I like my dowsing rods. I I hate I hate this thing. On yeah. It. The. Because it's just going to move on I its own. I don't like the handles. Exactly. I don't, I don't think you get a feel on them. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mine. There's, uh, it's, it's, it's not like you're connected or something. Okay. When I hold mine, I hold it like that. That away, look how much I got to move my hand. I'd had to really move it to get it to cross. And I hold it down at a right degree angle so well, for it to go up is against gravity yeah what we were what we were taught by uh the shaman is the whole you're you're, you're not even really holding the rods you're just you're just supporting them that's right it. So, and that's so all i'm doing you're not you're not you don't have a hard grip or nothing on it <coughs> and and she said to hold them level I, I know you tilt them which yeah it's got to do a lot more to to actually move it 
Right. Level, if you move your arms a little bit. Oh, I don't, your well, hands not, a little I'm bit. not moving my arms when I'm doing it. So I yeah, don't. you hold them tight, but still your body movement in one way. When so you're holding can, them down, they can swing, but they're going like this. For them to cross, they have to come up. Right, but like I said, the way she taught taught me how to do it, I'm I'm just I'm just supporting the rods. I'm not moving my hands. I'm not doing anything. The rods are just sitting in there, and that's it. Right. I'm not Ooh. moving my arms. I'm not moving my body. I'm just just holding them. I'm just supporting. Them. That's all well, I'm Luke doing. Luke says he sees something out in the dark out there. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that you know, when we were trained how to use dowsing rods, it was. There was two people who helped us learn how to use them. Sandy Little Lizard and Coyote Chris Sutton. Yeah, right. So I trust both of them with, you know, that they're going to tell me the truth. Yeah, they're yeah. the ones that showed us how to do it. And that's, I just went by how they, because they've been doing it for years. Yeah, right. And that, and that's well, how I've done better it. Better teachers. Right. That's me right. and Pastor Gary. Right. We grew up with uh, witching sticks. Yeah. Out of a willow tree, grab yep. two of them and walk out and find water. And when those things bend down, yeah. if you don't have a, if you don't watch what you're doing, they can break your wrist because they twist so tight. That's sissies. So doing that and then later on finding electrical lines and water lines using dowsing rods. Yep. And you know, you guys could actually on the show Moonshiners. Tim, Tim Smith, he's a, a, a distant relative of mine. He actually uses the dowsing rods to find water and they decide to dig a well yeah. where that, where they found water. Exactly. And I mean, he did this on TV, the Evergy here. Yeah, it works. Evergy uses dowsers all the time to locate lines. I mean, why would a huge company pay somebody damn good money to do that. It has to be accurate somewhere. Right. We've had, when you call 1-800-DIG here in Missouri, they come out with their machine and test. Mm -hmm. Then they take the machine back and I've seen the guy get out with dowsing rods and yeah. double check. Uh, yeah, that's what they do. Here's, here's something handy for you to know. If you call that number in Kansas... I get an email. <laughs> really? Yes, I do. <laughs> they got my name. They got my phone number from my old boss. And I don't know if it was an F you or what, but I get every <laughs> time they have to locate fiber or anything for CenturyLink or Lumen. I get an email telling me. Well, maybe you you'll tell a <laughs> You know, he so, knows you're a psychic medium. Yeah, and, like uh, they got me. They said, hey, you need to go out to Ottawa and check out this subdivision or right. this, this corner. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> right. So, so 1-800-DIG, some I Kansas can lead so. you to me. <laughs> right. Now, Rex, have you ever used dowsing rods? No. Personally, no. I've seen other people use them, um, but the people I've seen use them, I've been pretty like, yeah, you're full of hmm. shit. I could tell, you know, it right. wasn't even, I'm like, yeah, okay. But personally, no, I, I mean, I've watched my dad use the willow switch and stuff when uh, his when friend was <laughs> building a home and he used it to find where they were going to drill uh, dig for water. Right. I seen that a lot when I was growing up actually, but as far as using any, no. Hey, I've used them to locate keys I lost out in the yard. I've used it to locate the neighbor over here. She, her little girl lost her remote for her Roku. I went in the house with the dowsing rods, and within five minutes, it led me to them. Wow. Do you want to know something you cannot use dowsing rods for? <laughs> Find okay. rods. Finding a, a lost dowsing rod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we lost one in a graveyard in Springfield, and it was a nice one too. It was one made by. I got it at McPike Mansion. Really nice. Yeah. Should, should they make a disclosure on that then? Yeah, I know. That's no, what I said. You but, need to get your money back. So, 
and the thing is, is Dara used the dowsing rods oh my gosh. by some, that were made by the same guy to try to find Just it. To try and find it. And the I guarantee that it was found by the guy that had to mow the cemetery around <laughs> the blade. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bam. Very nice copper dowsing rods. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> some asshole leaving a dowsing rod out here again <laughs> yeah i got a whole damn twisted collection <laughs> but yeah you can find out and not only that rex we can stand on top of a grave and ask the right questions the dowsing rods will tell us how deep that grave is how deep how old male or female uh, yep Wow. So, yeah, they'll find them. Yep. So it's interesting to see because I've done it um, down in Cherry Vale. Oh, yeah. Cherry Vale yeah. was weird. Um, right. But that's, yeah, that that's was a strange graveyard. Well, that's why right. in the back we started taking care of this cemetery, they're on record. There is 80 some people buried there on record. There's only 58 headstones. Oh man. Right. But with the dowsing rods, there's several hundred out there. That doesn't is what it tells us. It's so, because, I think it's scared. because there are some some of those mounds out there that were that were pre graveyard being set up. Well, you look at uh you know how the headst uh, headstones are at the cemetery. And on the south end of the cemetery, we've got that big grass area by the sign. Yeah. Now you're seeing more indentations the size of a grave appearing out there. Right. So the, the boxes have now disintegrated enough to where. Exactly. Because we saw that in Kentucky. Yeah. There's a cemetery in Kentucky that I told Ron, I said, next time we go out there, we need to take you guys on a tour of this cemetery it's called dills cemetery d-i-l-s it's a workout just to get to it it is you park across the street you have to walk up a flight of Straight stairs up. across the road and then up five or six flights of stairs to get there i don't know how you get the bodies up there they're still burying people there okay on this right next to each other are buried hatfields and mccoys yeah buried next to each other because you know pike county Williamson, West Virginia, that's where all that uh, Hatfield and McCoy stuff happened. But yeah, they're buried all in the same graveyard. So the Dills is part of one of the families there. Mm -hmm. You have to go straight yeah. up this hill or straight up this path to get there. And like I told him, I said, I don't know how they're getting the, the coffins up there unless they're doing it by helicopter. How are they digging these graves into the mountain there? Yeah, so it's, yeah. It is, and you know, it's, yeah. When we went there, she goes, "Yeah, you got to park over here." And I said, "Well, where's where's the grave? Where's the graveyard?" She goes, "Oh, it's it's up there." And I went, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a workout just to get to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why this location, here, this not, location not here of the cemetery is up on a hill. Yeah. Yep. Well, we're in these areas up on the hill is where they would clear trees off and farm because there's less rocks. Right. You get down in the flatter areas and there's a lot of rock in the ground mm -hmm. around here. So up here, besides that, you put cemeteries up on a hill so that they the water wouldn't get up there right. and wash them out. You know, like Gary says, Indians were buried there back in the 1700s because that whole area had Indians in it because you got show Creek, which is one of the biggest creeks oh, in yeah. the County that floods like you wouldn't believe. Yep. And stuff. And now out there we've got the railroad tracks within 500 yards show Creek within 800 yards. So you have water running. You have railroad tracks, the energy from that, the history of the area, you got Hans Mill massacre three miles away. So when they were massacred out there, coming this way, you got where Hans Mill is and where far west is, we're in between. 
So when all the Mormons were being ran out of the county to go to Illinois, they had to come through this area. Well, remember, they didn't just go to Illinois. Right. They, they went to Atchison. They went further west. I mean, it's really that 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 period of time in Missouri is odd to begin with. Yeah, uh, this, well, Luke, this is what we call a little hill <laughs> in here. Yeah, we don't have mountains over here. Not where I live at. No. You go a little bit further west, uh, about 500 miles west, you got the the uh, Rockies. Right. Well, those are, out in Kansas, those are the and it's flat for as long as you can see on certain parts. Well, oh. it's, at a, it's at a slight incline, technically. Yeah. But it still looks flat. I'd we'll say those are, I'd say more. You get up there during the daylight, in the openings you can see for a long ways around. But, uh, yeah, somebody there somebody settled in that that land there or that area where that cemetery is. It's just too nice of an area. I mean, you got water, you've got plenty of wildlife to hunt. Right. Well, my relatives settled in that area before the county was created. Yeah. That county there was created from another county, right? Yeah, it was part of Ray County. Ray County actually went all the way to the Iowa line at one time. Oh, wow. And so when they, okay, in 1836 is when Caldwell County was created. And it was created and given to the Mormons out of Independence, Missouri, Ray County down there. To come up here, but they had to leave the settlers alone. In two years, the same governor that gave it to them issued an executive order to eradicate all of them out of the county. So the history there, you know, there were settlers all up through this area. You had the cavalry up through here, some civil war. <laughs> was up in here because we're not that far from Lexington and Richmond. What? So that gives right. you a lot of the history. Yep. You're not far from Richmond. No. We're see 1906 25 I'm 40 miles from Rich Richmond. Yeah. So, but you get down to Lexington, they had the battle down there, the cannonball still in the uh, courthouse there in the column that they fired across there. So, well, okay, Luke says. We got one in town close to me that gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's called Pants Cemetery. And there's U.S. Marines buried there from World War I. No one knows why or how, but there are two side by side. Hmm. Ooh, that's interesting. Huh. Very. Because if there's World War I soldiers there, why haven't us Americans went over and found out and had them brought back over? Exactly. That is really interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll go play some more of this. So I'm going to mute my mics. All righty. <clears throat> that was real different. Can you yep. count off how many spirits are here right now? Yeah, there you go. And all five ones. I, I didn't know if you could see the yellow on the ends of those or not. Oh, nope. yeah. Oh, oh, can you? Well, You're mine, you can't. How many Indians come through that portal and it's down to all five ones? How many Indians come out through this portal? Once. Two. Three, four, 
Eight. Okay. Hey. Got a question. Thank you. Okay. Ask Gary. Yep. Stand in the portal and ask how wide the portal is. Count off by feet. By two? By feet. How wide is the portal? How wide is the portal? And well, five feet. We don't want no metric stuff. So, then your feet count off how wide this photo is. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. About yeah, five to six about. feet diameter. Thank you. Laura, Laura said five. How steep is this portal? That's a pretty good guess. Count off five one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten. Thank you. Now. From 10, begin counting by 10, starting with 10. Is it 6 foot in diameter 20, by 5 30, or 10 foot wide? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Thank you. Now, from 100, can you count off? Five hundreds. How deep the portal is, starting with one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, thousand, eleven hundred, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Five Six, foot wide and seven, by ten foot high. Eighteen hundred. Let's found any possibilities. Well, Laura says it's five foot wide and ten foot high. Now, with that, the way he counted off the depth. Is it 1,800 feet to the other dimension? I have no clue. Nobody does, but it's an interesting, interesting question to bring up. Yeah, because all I see is, you know, a six-foot diameter circle. You don't see the depth. Nope, I just see, well, it's probably because I'm looking at it flat on a screen. Right. Maybe if I was there, maybe I would feel something different if I'm standing there. But visually, about, this I'm just seeing a six. How foot about uh, standing and looking at it from the field? Would you see something different? Quite possibly. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at the front of a mirror, it looks different. If you're looking yeah. at the back of a mirror. Well, that's interesting. Luke said, and every year there's a guy who flies over from the States and puts flags on the graves and doesn't give his name just comes and does this thing in the flybacks he he even done it during the pandemic yeah to honor the two u.s marines that are buried side by side in right. that local graveyard there hmm. they are buried next to a british soldier from world war one who got the victoria cross for carrying multiple wounded back well, that's a the Victoria Cross, I guess, is equal to our Purple Heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting, though. Huh. That would be really interesting to investigate. Well, luckily, that's not, you know, that's that's an honor, you know, similar to the family that's been taking care of Edgar Allan Poe's grave all these years. And even after he wasn't buried in that grave, <laughs> which is weird. But. 
you know. You, you, have you heard that? that story? What was that one show that was on TV? It was like one of the earlier ones. They had that uh, man and the woman. For what? For ghost hunting. The uh, most what? haunted. Yeah, what was her name? Uh, he's dead. Um, he just died. I know, but I, I, I think I remember them talking about this. Or they, I think they even went there. Uh, I'm friends with the where one he, lady. Yeah, where um, he's talking about this. Because I said when when I read that, it's like that yeah, I've seen that story before. Yeah, it could have been on Most Haunted. I mean, that shows yeah, only been on the I air think for what, well over I think 20 what years it was. at this point. I mean, it was on and it was off. And, so. But what's interesting about doing some of these live investigations <laughs> like that, it's, it's a place that's not one of your well-known locations that you pay fortunes to go in and investigate. But we can. We can charge you. We can charge you a fortune to go. Well, we can charge you out there. <laughs> but that's not the point. Five hundred a night. Uh, just let us know what night you're out there, and we'll give you a five hundred for fifteen minutes. Then you're done. Right. Similar to the Velisca Axe Murder House. Yep. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course, it I'm could be kidding. one of those. If you find it, it's free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good if, you, if you look up Cox Cemetery, you're not really going to find it. Uh uh-uh, uh. I did. Won't. I did last night. Did well, you? And I found it. And find a grave. You it's you, a it's grave. usually listed on another Uh-oh. name. Yeah, you know. I found it as right. Cox Cemetery on Find a Grave last night because I was, was doing it New York Township or something. Yeah, New York yeah. Township. It but was, I found it one time. I, it was Spring Hill. Right. Yeah. Stop and they spelled then, Spring Hill two different ways. They spelled right. it all one word, and then they spelled it as two. Spring oh. Hill Cemetery, and then <laughs> the relatives bought the ground and donated it as a cemetery. Right. They renamed it to Cox Cemetery. <laughs> that for pay for mowing. Yeah, that would help pay for the mowing. That's right. <clears throat> as high as gas is, you know, a couple trips back and forth. It takes him four and a half hours. I know, I bet. I always wondered how... I felt sorry for people who had to mow graveyards, actually, because you, there's not an easy way to do it. That's why... Hey, that's that, that, that graveyard there is not bad. If you mow a regular one, you couldn't get me to mow it. Right, I don't know how they how they get yeah. in and out. And, Look at well, it. that's why they charge a fortune. Yeah, I'll bet. There's also... Now, a lot of the graveyards, you can only have the flat stones to where they can just mow right over it. Yeah. So um there's one of those on Metcalf uh, at uh college in Metcalf. Mm-hmm. There's also a, a goose problem there too, but that's a whole different problem. <laughs> <laughs> the, the geese go across the street at this graveyard because there's a pond and they'll cross the street and they will stop traffic. And it and again, Metcalf is a very busy road. And so at 110th and Metcalf, if you're ever down there. Just be aware if the geese are out, people are stopped waiting for them to finish crossing. I ain't stopping for it. (laughs) The only thing we have out there is (laughs) raccoons, turkeys, and deer come in there to nibble on the grass because it's fresh green grass. Rattlesnakes, mountain lions, bears. Well, we've been lucky. I haven't seen a rattlesnake out there. Did you see that story? um, I think Gary said he mowed one over. Yeah. Over one. The, a lady in Kansas City is in the hospital right now for a rattlesnake bite. Yep, she is. I, see I don't that. know where she was at, but... But, but out yeah. there, I mean, yeah, you can... You're in the country, what can I say? This is a big hunting area. Out we there have them over here as well. I just don't know. I yeah, haven't seen any, but it's. I'm more concerned about the mountain rattlers line. I had? Yeah. yeah, it's the mountain lions I'm concerned about here. Yeah, and bobcats. That's oh, right. I love bobcats. We yeah. we do have Those we have cool. a couple bobcats around here. Those are hard to see or hard to find, actually. The foxes here. Not up here, they're not. Here. Go out here in deer season, you'll find them all the time. Really? Oh yeah, they walk around the trees and <coughs> they're especially well, then they got the young ones out teaching them. Yeah, how to hunt turkeys. Yeah, we're right. 
we're right at the edge of town. So if we see him, it's unusual. Yeah. Um, Our we, biggest problem we, is the guy that owns the property on the north and east side of the cemetery that we have to argue. For him to go in there, he drives right over the top of the cemetery. Yeah. Why? Because that's where he's got his opening. He could go down here a little ways and drive down the road and come in. But he's the one the game wardens keep an eye on because he baits the deer. That's the guy we oh, okay. ran into that the morning we got up when we went camping. Yeah. One yeah. Night. Pulled that, up in that, that little ranger. Like, yeah. Yeah. He seemed like such a nice guy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He no. burnt. Gary had a big pile of firewood out there for the next time we did a yeah. camp out. This guy decided he was going to burn the underbrush. You know where he started the fire? Right there. In that, in that pile of wood. What a dick. Yeah. I, and he burnt all the underbrush on the north side out. And... <coughs> Yeah. Are you want me to mince words there, <laughs> Rex? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no. But what's funny is he burnt all that off. And you know those yucca plants and iris plants out there in the timber. Yeah. It shouldn't be in the timber. Yeah. And everything. Those burn up. They'll but come they back. Did, they did grow back. Yeah, they will. Because the bulbs are protected. And so they'll come back every year. Yeah, and like Gary says, the lady, the people that were mowing it before we took it over and everything, she quit because a rattlesnake, she hit one and then one got up on the deck. Oh. And she said, she's not going back out there no more. I don't blame her. So that's when we decided to take it over and got all the information and the paperwork on it and everything. It's... It's a unique. Hey, Luke, send me the information. I can find any grave. So they're easy enough to find. In fact, you can probably find it yourself if you use the Find a Grave website. And uh, have why didn't you got to find two of them in Nebraska, Luke? They owe him money. They owe him money. Yep. <laughs> Could be. No, they don't. Jeff isn't going to stop me from collecting. That's no. right. I want it my two dollars. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, this cemetery and Denise will tell you, Rex, this is so peaceful and calm out there. It's a great place to sleep. Yes, when we go to sleep in the tents, I've never had a better sleep. Been sleeping out there. We're dead away. <laughs> Even if you wake up and it's 24 degrees outside, <laughs> it was still a nice sleep. Oh, that's great sleeping weather. Yeah. Well, uh, just you, you laugh. I know where you live. You laugh at 24 degrees, but the day before was 82. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And it was 65. It had been in the 80s. It was 65 fire. that that day. Yeah. Beautiful evening. We yeah. sat, had a campfire going. And everything and was around it. And when we got and done investigating, went, went to sleep, quick. got up the next morning, and oh my. Ooh, it was, it was a little head. brisk out there. Yep. About 22, 24 degrees with 30 mile an hour winds. It was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what happened? Okay. Now that's interesting. Luke says, I mean, when I come out there, my great great grandfather was buried next to his mother in Nebraska, and I've never seen it. And I'm living in his church, and I want to make sure it's looked after. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So, so, like I said, Luke, yeah, what's try to find a grave, or and if you can't find well, it, send, there, send let us me know. their names, I'll find them. Yeah, no, send Denise the name. She'll look it up. Does he know yeah. where at in Nebraska, maybe? Even if he doesn't he know just, where, I can find Just him. somewhere in Nebraska. If we can get dates and time, that even helps more. Right. <clears throat> so I pull him up on the Mormon website that has the all the deaths, all the records. So even right. if I don't have a lot of information, I can find it on there. So On, the, on what? The, the Mormons have this really good genealogy website. 
Oh, and it's yeah. funny. They're actually genealogy website and history is better huh. than the U.S. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. They know more about us than anybody. Yeah. They might as well be working for the government. Yeehaw. But they did tell me, though, that my mom is not buried properly. Not a clue. And because he was she's in not World buried. War I. <laughs> he doesn't even know if he has a military headstone. Well, it wouldn't matter. I mean, we can... Like I said, we can still find... All we need is a name. Yep. Yeah. All we need is a name, first name, last name, possibly middle name. And his mother's name. And his and the mother's name. If, I mean, hell, if I only have one of the names, I can probably find the other. You're right. So, but I've been able to find all kinds of crap that I never thought I'd find. Yeah, but if you had both names, you could it'd help verify each other. But, folks, if you want to watch the rest of that investigation or the full thing, go to the Bill of Rights Network, look up the videos, and go to Cox Cemetery Paranormal Giving Tree, a four-and-a-half-hour video of what we investigated out there. And if you send, if you send us um, the time stamp of something that you see, let us know. Yeah, let us and know. We'll, and we'll pull it back That's up and I'm we'll look back now. at I'm it. I'm going through it. Oh, cool. he's got all the information on the death certificate. Right. He's got it all. Yep, he's oh, got that. He's got what he needs. Find. So I said, real easy. Um, so, but he and something else you might look up on there. He had to be a pastor or something because he's Luke is living in his church. That's yep. his house out there. Is a church. Yeah. Hmm. But was he still a minister when he came here, or was he considered a farmer? I don't know. I said, we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll a find lot. out. Stay tuned for the rest of the story. That's right. As Paul Harvey says. Right. He, yep. A lot of people, well, all of us know who Paul Harvey is. Yes. So, um, Rex, yes. Rex, have you been able to look up the show, The OA? No. On Netflix? I, I, if, if you can get past it's the on first. My, it's on my list, but I haven't looked it up yet. When you get past the first two episodes, it gets really interesting then. It is the first two episodes are hard to watch because it kind of jumps around a little bit. But this was one of the top shows on Netflix for a while and they didn't renew it. What's and it I don't know why. You, didn't, you just said why. You said the first no two episodes. It's so? three it's three seasons. Oh, three. First two seasons? No, the here? first two shows oh. were just hard to watch. It's called what? OA? D O A. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and I I'm not gonna tell you what OA stands for. Yeah, uh, don't because that'll ruin it. And uh so a short synopsis is it is about people who have had near death experiences. And this guy is trying to figure out do they make a sound he's in he's investigating near-death experiences is it based on true story no i mean it could be i don't know and so throughout all this it gets really weird but you really get to understand how when you make a decision in life how it can take you on a different road and how these near-death experiences can change your life as well so Say you were going down one path, <coughs> you had a near-death experience, and it changed your path. Say you stayed on the same path the whole time, it would be different. And, and it shows all these different scenarios that happened in this one woman's life, and she becomes different people in the show. And she yeah. learns how to find the person she was at a different time, a different past life and not different past life but a different near death experience who she was I see why it's not around so actually it's it's That's really nice. interesting it's, it's just, weird it is weird because you know it's like the old timeline you know if you go back in time will you know an offshoot wow create something but you know just a near death experience that's really i think that's brilliant though that coming across Hmm. But no, I got a question for you, Denise. You've watched the show The Secrets of the Skinwalker Ranch. 
Yeah. Well, I have. Yeah. He, he has what do you think of it? I like it. I think it's interesting. It's just a, it's a weird place. I mean, some of the stuff they're coming up with and the the different experiments they do. I I don't know. I, right. I don't that's, know that's what I've been watching and taking notes on on some of the experiments that they're yeah. doing and yep. stuff. But the one thing that bothers me about the whole show is a guy who owns the place. Yeah. He acts like a fake actor. He's he's, he's a corporate guy. I yeah. know, but still he's weird. He seems yeah, he's a little weird. He, he seems like a he's on I would say he's scripted on what he says. Kind of, yeah. Sounds like it, yeah. Well, you know, think about it. If he's corporate. But I mean, why did he buy the place? Well, he bought it for, for research. Well, he had I think he just got more money than he knows what to do with. But yeah. other than that, he, he bought it to to do stuff like this with. I would love to go out there and spend a week. I would too. Stay but I'll tell you what, yep. he does he does have some very reputable people doing the experiments. Yeah. That's the part I like. And it's not these, you know, they're no clowns or nothing. You know what's also weird is that that Blind Frog Ranch is right there too. Yeah. That other show. And then yep. do you know that there is another place very similar in Georgia that they they call us they're saying that it's like Georgia Skinwalker Ranch. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't know what's yeah I'm, I, I want to talk to the guy. Cat interviewed um this guy and there were some things he couldn't say because they were filming a show there. So what maybe it me is all the technology and everything we have, even the previous owner had the government backing him and investigating out there and doing stuff. And you still can't find out why that energy level is coming from down below or up above. You know, they, right. Did they ever, and I watched it and the only thing that bothered me was it was, it was so much like, um, Oh, the guy with the Island. Oak or Oak, Oak Island. Island. Oh yeah. I, I got so tired. It, it, I mean, it mirrored each other the the way the episodes were. You know, you yeah. get all hyped hey, up, and then it was like, yeah, okay. and <laughs> that's the only well, thing that bothered me. I mean, it's very yeah. Very it's a TV show; they have to have the excitement and appeal yep. to it. So, well, they do the same thing on on loan. You know, look, this guy fell. Got to go to commercial. They do it on every yep. paranormal show there is. They do it on. Oh, the we caught commercial yeah they, like i said they do it on the news we do it when well, we this, tell people to come back and see what who we're having next week the skinwalker oh, yeah. ranch this was their third season right uh i've yeah. only watched season one and season two and where okay, are you yeah, watching this, it at? this season that i'm watching it on the ruku channel okay. okay this was their third season they just ended i didn't start watching it till about halfway through this third season Oh really? <laughs> but then I went back and and got up to you know the uh, you first were, you episode watched from the very first show all the way up. Yeah, no, I, I went back to the first episode of the this of season, season of this season right now, and then after the season end, I went back and got the other ones. Yeah, because it's interesting. You know, this guy gets out there, and he's like in. You know, his credentials are out of this world. Right. Nat, uh, yeah. He's, and he's like, I don't believe in this crap. Right. And within an hour. Yeah. He's like. Yeah. What the hell is going me? on out here? That's kind of what I'm thinking. There's. Yeah. There's that's what got him excited and into. We got to yep. do this and this. And then the big thing is don't dig on the ranch. Yeah. And then yeah. they dig on the ranch. Oh, you haven't seen that yet. <laughs> yeah, they're digging right now in so, season two. Yeah. Did they ever discuss yeah. if there was any ley lines or anything? Did they check for that? I don't remember. They talked about somebody Somebody came on there. We were talking about ley lines. Really? I haven't heard anything about the ley lines yet. Yeah, it was, they had some. Well, they bring different people in. But yeah, the season three, they you know they're shooting up a bunch of rockets, and it's almost right after they do that, they catch they catch something in the sky. 
What Some gets me is stuff moving around. It's, it's in the uh, first season there when the cow dies. Yeah. And they're out checking it and all this and that and have the vet come out and do the autopsy and everything, right? Yep. A couple of shows later, they come back in and the guy that does the big computer room and yep. says, I want to show you something, guys. Look at this cow before it dies. And they show it sitting down. And then it heads goes up and looks around. Yeah, it looks around. Then he goes above the tree and there's an object in the sky. Yep. Now that, there's a lot of, like we say, unexplained. Yep. And he's got access to all the flights in the area and everything. Right. You know, but well, like they showed on that one helicopter, if they don't have the transponder on. Right. You can't track them. Right. Well, you haven't gotten to season three, right? No. Okay. There, there's a guy. They got cameras all over the place. Yep. Well, if they were doing, uh, they were firing rockets up and that, kind of stirring things up. And on one of their security cameras, man, they captured this. It's a cool looking orb. I mean, it's big. It comes in. It turns. Goes up, down. Goes. It, it's. And you see it, you're going to get chills. It is, it's awesome. I mean, I like the beams that they were seeing. Yeah. Especially at nighttime, you couldn't see them with your eyes or during the day. But yet they put the night vision up and it showed the beam going up. Yep. Out of the ground. Well, you'll like, you're going to like season three because they do a lot of experiments. I mean, almost every episode they do something. I mean, yeah. Just like the one whenever they uh, had the ground penetrating equipment out there. Yep. I said, oh, I'd give anything to have that at the cemetery. Oh, Luke found his grave. Well, I figured he would. Is he, it's not hard. In the third season, they, they drill into the uh, mountain. This one guy brought some guy that used to into work the out in the Mesa that years ago it used to work there. He said, yeah, there's like a hole or a pit down in here. And he went and, he, you know, they walked around. He goes, yeah, it was right here. But he goes, I don't remember this rock. Well, it looked like he said yeah, a bunch of rocks had come over or came down and like, like covered it almost. So they drill from the side and get this guy and all of a sudden this drill, it won't go. It goes in about three, 400 feet. And all of a sudden he says, yeah, my drill is going, I think he said going down or up. Anyway, right. he said it was hitting something going up. Well, when they start pulling all the stuff out, there is metal that comes out of this. This is 400 feet into this Mesa. It's a metal when they do it, when they have it tested, a, a lot of the uh, the material or the, the the metals that are in it are not yeah. even from this 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 con or this world. I know. So they think there's like a dome or something up inside this thing. The only the only way you're going to find that out is set charges off and start blowing some of that ridge well, off to get down in there. Right, and that's what they're debating when at the at the end. That's what they're debating about doing is doing you know further digging in but they don't really want to disturb you know what might no be and i don't blame them i right. don't blame them either you nah. know there's weird things that's happened every time they disturb yeah something out there yeah you know the guy with his skull sep skin separating from his skull yeah his scalp that the doctors couldn't figure out you know why do you get radiation burns on your body looking down in a well there's all kinds of place it yeah is. yeah i found it on there and i went well this ought to be interesting and yeah I well, I, you know why you know why i started i was just flipping through channels i saw you know skinwalker you know skinwalker ranch and i'm like oh, okay yeah that's a weird place and i saw travis on there that's why I started to watch it because I know him. Oh, really? And I, I, yeah, I know what. Well, Cat knows him pretty well, but she said, "Yeah, the guy knows what the hell he's talking about." Right? Um, because he, yeah, he's an engineer. He's he an worked engineer. He worked for NASA. He yeah. worked in different positions. That's why I started watching it, and then I got to learn the other people. I'm like, well, hell, these are reputable too. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, security guys are a little weird, but yeah, the security guy, that's another one. Him and the owner. Yeah. I'm kind of like, are these paid actors? I I don't know. If I up. had a security guy, he wouldn't act like that. Look him no. up on IMDB. Well, I think the, the owner, he owns a, a lot of uh commercial buildings in right. Salt Lake. You know. Oh yeah, he's got big bucks. He's loaded. Well, in more more ways than one, possibly. So, but yeah, I you can watch uh, the old replays of Skinwalker. We did, on uh, yeah, we did the uh, closed caption too, with while we we're watching the video. I did, right? Yeah, I've got to go back through and was, do some more short videos and uh, do the closed up a caption few on it. on the Echo Vox that we didn't pick up, but most part it didn't pick up. They're no. just picking up us talking. That the was great it. thing that night was the people in our chat room. Oh man, yeah, we that we still after four and a half hours had as many people. It was at right. the end of the night. The they were seeing stuff. It got crazy. They have the gift like Denise does. A lot of them do. Yeah, and different things, and they were seeing stuff. Yep, and kept telling us and. That's why I like doing this virtual investigation. When you can't have somebody there and you want somebody, then yeah. We call it a spirit box. The echo box is the echo box. Necrophonics, necrophonics. And the radio I use is the ink box X yep. spirit box. Just, yeah, they're just all different, completely different than a spirit box. Different, different brands, similar situation. Right. Different. Three different things and trying to see if we get the same right out of each of them. So, so well, we got three minutes. So, Rex, tell everybody where they can find your show and what's coming up on it. Uh, our show is on Saturday nights live at 7 p.m. Central and it's called Music, Movies, and Maybe More. Um, each show keeps getting better. We had a great show last week and had a lot of people tune in and was, for even more. That he's was fun. A, he's got another one that he's going to go to here in September. Another oh, really? Well, it'll be a little cooler anyway. <laughs> was gonna be a trip. Shane looked like he was sweating his butt off. <laughs> <laughs> he had a great time. He's Yeah, it looked like it. He had a great time. <laughs> and it, it turned out good. I mean, we were a little yeah. worried there at the beginning, but it all came to together, and it was great. Good <laughs> deal. Good deal. So, Denise, tell everybody where they can find you. You guys can find me right here on the Bill of Rights Network, the Paranormal Pride, uh, Facebook pages, and YouTubes. Um, my show is Monday nights at 7 p.m. Central. And uh, coming up this week, my guest is Carter Bouchard, BFRO. So we're going to be talking some Bigfoot. And some strange sightings in the Kansas City area, which I didn't know that we were a big UFO Bigfoot area. Yeah, I thought I was. Yeah. If you look up uh, <laughs> Bigfoot in your area on the BRFOR, Gallatin, Missouri, Davies County is in it. Right there up here go. north of us, about four or five miles, a farmer spotted one on his farm. Well, needless to say, oh, really? Carter will know all about it. He's Carter is also appearing at. You get an autograph the, or anything? <laughs> Carter's also <laughs> going to be appearing at the uh, haunted his haunting history Paracon in August or October seventh and eighth in Joplin, Missouri. So we'll be talking about uh, what he's going to be talking about there. He had he does do a really good um, talk about Bigfoot, and he's entertaining. Good. Good. And yes, folks, sense of humor. Right. <laughs> and folks, check out all our shows over on the Bill of Rights Network. Let me see how this is going to look. Uh, where am I at? Okay, there it is. Here is a list of all the shows there. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And we got some more shows coming out this month. So stay tuned to us. But you can find this post over on the Bill of Rights Network. Uh, right after this show, stay tuned tonight at 7.30 and 30 minutes for the Conservative View with Barbara and Lorna with guest Dennis Beavers. 
His wife passed away eight years ago of ovarian cancer. He is one of the biggest speakers on ovarian cancer on women. So if you want information on it and everything, tune in to the show tonight because I talked to him for an hour last night and I was really interested in it. So, you know, everybody check it out. Good night, everyone. Yeah. So y'all have a good time and check us out. We'll see you next week here on Paranormal Nation Radio.